Hey everybody, welcome to Money's No Object. I am your host, Dylan Howell. This is episode number 11 of our new YouTube channel and podcast. And I'm just so excited to share some more knowledge about personal finance with you guys. Um, this is a new channel and you guys know this. Hopefully you've been watching. Hopefully you've been keeping up with the things that I've posted. If you could, uh, just go down below and hit the big red subscribe button and like this video. Uh, comment on this video, leave me any feedback that you'd like to leave me, anything you'd like to maybe hear from the channel or anything you'd like to uh, see moving forward. Just leave me that and uh, I will definitely take that to heart moving forward in this journey that we're going on together. Another thing you can do is go to social media, the major social media platforms and follow us at MNO with Dylan or go to our website www.mnowithdylan.com and check out the services that we offer and um, just the ways that we can help you through financial coaching or maybe seeing the most current video or the most current podcast. So if you could go there and, and check those things out, uh, that would be very helpful to you guys. So, so go check it out and um, hopefully we can continue to, to provide value through that site moving forward. Also, if you're interested in listening instead of watching, uh, you can go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts and listen to the podcast version of this show. And there you can subscribe as well. And that would that would help us out, continue continue bringing you uh, really good content that you can you can listen to every day. So what's today's video about? Well, today is where I really get excited. Today is when we are getting over the hump in the financial action plan. We're actually taking steps now that are really going to lead to your financial flourishing, are really going to lead to you building wealth and being able to give generously and being able to uh, just continue in a way that is a, a place of strength and not a place of weakness that you may have been in previously. Today we cover financial action plan step five, which is to buff up that emergency fund that we set previously. So if you'll remember in step two of the financial action plan that we covered, we had one month of expenses that we set aside in a savings account or a money market account. That way we have this fund of money that we can use if we need it. If something goes awry that, that we didn't plan for, that we can go and, and grab that money and, and use it for those things. But now we're going to take an even more drastic step in that direction and say, okay, we have a month's worth of expenses, but that's, that's not enough, especially if you own a home and you have children and you know th different things in your life that just add to your financial complexity. You need more than just one month of expenses. So today in buffing up this emergency fund, we're going to make it four to six months of expenses. So let's just recap real quick where we are in the financial action plan. So step one, we budgeted, right? We set out our income and our expenses and, and we worked our way down that budget and you can uh, watch that video if you haven't already. Also, we went to step two and like I alluded to just a moment ago, we created an emergency fund, one month's worth of expenses in a money market or a savings account. And so we have that setting aside for emergencies and you can, once again, that, that video is available to watch as well. And then we went to step three and step three was if you had a match from your employer uh, in your employer sponsored retirement account, then investing up to that match is, is step three. That way we can kind of start building those, those saving muscles up and, and start taking steps in the right direction as far as having good financial habits. And then we went to step four is what we closed on on Friday, which is one of the most difficult steps. And that was to pay off all your consumer debt other than your mortgage. And, and that's a really difficult place. And, and that's the one a lot of people are, are afraid of, but it's so essential to you stepping into this next part of your financial action plan to where you can actually start building. You can start building wealth in a way that, that you couldn't before, and you can start setting yourself, yourself up in, in a strong position with a, with a firm foundation to where you don't owe anyone money and all the, all the extra money that, that you have, you can allocate in a way that is going to benefit you, benefit others, and just do the most good in your own, in your own life, in your own mind, in, in the way that you want it to do good. 
So you might be saying to me at this point, Dylan, did we not already do this? Did we not already build an emergency fund? Isn't that boring? Isn't that the step that you said? It's not sexy. It's not. Isn't that what you said? Yes, that's that's what I said. And I agree. It's it's not a whole lot of fun just to save, right? And not necessarily see your money grow in in a in a spectacular way. So I get your feeling here, but if you want to build financial strength, if you want to put yourself in a position to win long term, you have to have this extra amount. You have to have this emergency fund built all the way up. The good news is you already have a one month head start. You already have one month of expenses setting aside. So when I say four to six months of expenses, you only have another three to five months of expenses to go. So this can actually happen really quick now because you don't have any debt. You don't have anybody that you owe. So that money that was going to your creditors can now go towards this emergency fund. Another piece of good news is that you may be saying, this is a lot of money. This is a, a large amount, four to six months of expenses. I mean, if household expenses for a month were $4,500 and you did four months of expenses, that's $18,000. That's that's a lot of money to have setting aside for most of us. And so when you are looking at, at just the, the large amount and going, man, that's a that's a lot of money. Couldn't I be investing more already? Couldn't I be I couldn't I be pushing forward towards actually growing my money in a in a, in a way that's going to be more beneficial long term? Well yes you could. You could do those things. The problem with doing that though is the fact that you're going to be investing large amounts that presumably most of it you won't be able to touch. Most of it you're gonna put in retirement accounts, you're gonna put in things that have limitations to what you can take out of it, things like that. And you don't, you don't want all your money tied into things that are not liquid, tied into things that you can't take money out of in the foreseeable future. So you want this safety mechanism. You want this emergency fund setting aside. Also, you don't want to sell investments that are doing well in order to cover emergencies anyway. I'd like to have a nice cash pile that's sitting there that is just a cushion between me and life that's even bigger than what we decided we were building before with the one months of expenses. And that's precisely why we're doing this step in the first place. That's precisely why we did step number two in building the initial emergency fund. The, the reason that we're even doing this is because life is going to punch you in the mouth. One way or another, things are going to happen that you didn't plan on and that you didn't want to happen, but it just happened anyway. And so life is going to do these things to you and you want to be prepared. You want to be able to pay for things in cash up front and not have to worry about, well, where am I going to get this money from and where am I going to maneuver my finances in order to do something um, that I have to do and that is necessary and that is pressing and that is just something that, that I can't go without right now. If there is one thing I can be sure of financially for you and for me and for everyone, it's that we're going to have to spend money on things that we don't want to at some point. And so you might as well just get to the place where you have that money laying around. This is, once again, as we talked about in step two, this is not money that we want to be grabbing from to go out to eat or be grabbing from to buy something for our kids or for ourselves or, or whatever. We want to have this money sitting there and hopefully we never use it. Hopefully it's just sitting there. But but tragedy is sure. Tragedy is sure. Things that are negative in your life will come. So you might as well just be prepared for that for that thing to happen and you can move forward with confidence and you can move forward with with a little bit more financial security than you had previously. So let's cover one more time what constitutes an emergency. Well, there's those three questions that we covered, right? Is it anticipated? Well, if it's anticipated, it's not an emergency. If if it's not anticipated, then then yes, it could be an emergency. Then is it essential? Is it something that has to happen? Is it something that I have to spend money on? And if it is essential, then that could be an emergency. And if it's non-essential, then obviously not an emergency. And then lastly, is it pressing? Is it something that has to happen now? And if it's something that has to happen now, emergency. But if it's something that doesn't have to happen right now, then not an emergency. So for instance, I, I'm not going to call 911 
because my house might be on fire later. No, I'm going to call 911 when my house is on fire. That's what I'm talking about. Is it pressing? Because you have to put out that financial fire right now. Now, let's let's be clear again about a, a couple of things. A, a lot of things that you're going to have to pay for need to be budgeted for in some kind of way. So we, we talked previously about sinking funds and how we need to be putting even if it's small amounts of money, we need to be putting money away for things that we know we're going to have to deal with. So like car repairs. So you know you're going to have to get the oil changed on your car. You know you're going to have to get new tires at some point, new brakes at some point. So just incrementally saving money to get to the point where you don't have to worry when those things are are pressing in your life, right? Th that can be a, a pressing matter, but it, it's not unanticipated. It's it's 100% anticipated. So you need to anticipate it financially by setting up those funds to go ahead and save money for those things. Other things like that are house repairs because you know that you're going to have to do something to your house at some point. Your AC might go out at some point, and that, that can definitely be an emergency. We talked about that in part two, that, that that can be an emergency. But if there's any particular way that we cannot touch our emergency fund and we have other funds setting aside for those things, then then that's that's awesome. That That's what we would prefer. We would prefer to to have money that, that we can go ahead and spend uh, out of budgeted sinking funds to, to do these things. But if you just have the emergency fund and you have to pull out of it, that's fine. But just know you're going to have to replenish that emergency fund later. Also, in this kind of gets under my skin is is when insurance premiums are due every six months or every year or however you've set it up like that where it's 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 a longer time period and you don't plan for that and you don't have money saved for that that's not an emergency that is not something you go to your emergency fund for you should be saving for that incrementally in your budget throughout the year throughout the the quarters throughout the six month period you you should be saving money for that already and if you're not then that's a problem you need to start doing that and that is external to your emergency fund because that's not an emergency that's an expense that we know you're going to have and that should be budgeted for already and so now you're thinking well dylan th this is a lot of money so shouldn't we invest this i know we didn't do the the one month of expenses but but shouldn't we invest the the four to six months that money could really grow for us and you're right that money could grow for you but let's just say this is this is a, a hypothetical that i just want to throw out there and i don't like looking at worst case scenarios very often but this really sets forth exactly what we're doing with the emergency fund so let's say you get your emergency fund up to fully funded four to six months of expenses and let's say for you that that's twelve thousand dollars okay well, let's say that you get it fully funded and let's say you're investing that money and it's not in a savings account or a money market account. And let's say we had something go on like we just did in March where the stock market drops by over 30% and you lose over 30% of that $12,000. Well, that means you lost almost $4,000. So let's say now you're down to eight. Well, let's say a, a big expense comes along, like you get into some kind of car accident that was your fault and you only had liability coverage or, or something to where you have to put money forward. Well, maybe that 12 could have helped you a lot more than that eight. And the whole point I'm getting to is with, with an emergency fund, you don't want to have to rely on the market to grow in order to have the money there. You, you want to go ahead and just have that money set in stone and, and not have to worry about the, the little things external to an emergency happening. And an emergency bad enough, we don't, have to, we don't need to be worrying about whether the money's going to be there or not. The emergency is bad enough, so just focus on getting through the emergency and, and not, well, do I have enough? Do I... It did the market do well enough to for me to have the money that I need to have for this thing? And as I've talked about earlier with the steps like building the one month of expenses, emergency fund, or paying off your debt, this needs to be an intense process of building this money up. And why do I say this about these particular steps? It's because 
you want to spend the majority of your time doing things that are value maximizing. And don't get me wrong, building an emergency fund does provide you with a ton of value and provide you with insurance against tragedy like we talked about previously. So that needs to be there and it's a big part of your financial journey. The problem is, is that we're not putting this money in there to grow. We're not building upon this asset. We're not gaining equity. So this money's just gonna sit there. And that's fine, that's what it's there for. But we wanna get to the steps to where we're really ramping up and we're really wealth building. And, and we're not just providing ourselves with safeguards against things that could happen. So this is a, a perfectly fine step and a, and a essential step to this process, but we want to get to the next ones. We want to continue moving forward. So, so this is this is the last step that I really say: be intense, go hard, don't don't slack off, and and be, you know, do do what you have to do to get through this step really fast. Because you've already you've already built yourself a position of more financial strength than you had previously. You you don't have debt. You already have the one month of expenses. And so now you can really, really push hard and use all the extra money that was going to creditors and go ahead and spend that money towards your emergency fund. We really want to get to where we can do three things moving forward. We want to get to where we can invest like crazy. We can really start putting money away for retirement and for the future like crazy. We want to go ahead and do that. We, we want to get to a place where we can pay off your home. And if, if you haven't up to this step, get to a place where you can purchase a home and be financially stable enough to do so. So we want to get to those two places. And then we also want to be able to give like crazy. We want to be able to be far more generous than we've been able to be in the past because we didn't have the money to be that generous. Now you're going to have money. You're going to have money to be generous and you're going to have these monetary safeguards like an emergency fund to be generous. And that's that's such a huge thing and, and you're really going to benefit from being able to do all three of these things in, in greater quantities. It's going to be far more fun and more joyful than some of the previous steps that we've walked through. So I'm just trying to get you there. I'm trying to get you to that point. So let's be intense on this step. Let's work hard on it and, and not take a whole lot of time trying to build this four to six months of expenses up. This is just a really bad step to get stuck on. It's a really bad step to decide that you don't want to do this anymore because you're right on the doorstep of financial freedom. You're right on the doorstep of building wealth. You're right on the doorstep of doing all the things that you ever wanted to do. But at the same time, you're also just on the back porch of financial bondage. You just got past the point where you were in debt and you owed people money. And if you don't build this emergency fund, it's extremely likely that something's gonna occur that's gonna push you back into debt if you don't build these safeguards now. And the good news is once you're past this step, once you actually do this, you have some money. You have something that you did not have before and you don't have to worry about paying your bills anymore and you don't have to worry about owing people money anymore and you don't have to have to worry about all these things that were just pressing in your life previously because of your finances. Now you're on strong financial footing. Now you can move forward with so much confidence and with so much just intensity. And you can be sure that everything you're going to do in the future is going to be positive and everything you're going to do in the future is going to be value maximizing. And that's not to say that bad things aren't going to happen in the future, but we have built safeguards against that. And we've made it to where there's only so much bad that can go on. At this point, I'm not going to file bankruptcy because why? I don't owe anybody any money. There's not a high likelihood of me foreclosing on a home that I own. Why? Because that's the only thing that I owe money to and the only thing that I have to pay. And so I'm going to I'm going to make sure that that's happening, right? And even further, if I get to where you pay off the home, well, then you don't owe anybody money and you have money and you don't have to worry about the what ifs of your financial life. The what ifs are taken care of because you took the steps because you decided that you were going to change your own life. A common question here might be, well, you said four to six months of expenses. How do I know which shouldn't, it isn't four just the easiest to get to. And if I want 
more safety get to the six or or whatever well kind of so let me let me kind of walk through this with you if your income is extremely stable and let's say you're married and your spouse's income is really stable and there's not a high likelihood of you losing a job at any point not a high likelihood of your spouse needing a lot of a lot of cushion between themselves and losing their job well then you might stray towards the four months of expenses because you have a lot more certainty than somebody else well that other person I, you remember when we talked about budgeting, we talked about people with variable incomes. Well, if you have a, an extremely variable income, you should probably push towards the six months of expenses saved in an emergency fund because you are far more likely to, to hit a month where you don't make the, the money that you thought you would make and you're short and that's an emergency. And so if you, if you can't protect the four walls around you and you can't uh, pay for lights and water and rent and all those types of things. You want that that emergency fund to be there. So the six months is, is more for those people. Now, if you're somebody who's extremely conservative and, and you're, you're financially conservative and you worry about having money set aside, you might stray towards the six months as well. And if you're a little more uh, financially risky, you might stray towards the four months of expenses. So it's it's a place where you can choose, but it's also a place where there are certain people who should stray to one side or the other as well. So at this point, the hard part is over. We are over the hump. We are over the part where we're not on strong financial footing and we're struggling and we're, we're doing things that, that are bad financial habits. Now you're building good financial habits. You have paid off debt. You have learn to start saving and and you've started doing all these things that are really building these strong financial muscles well now you can move forward and and be confident and be strong and and the hardest part is over now everything from here gets really really easy and when i say it gets easy i mean that it's not a matter of you being able to pay your bills or not it's not a matter of you worrying about having money or not now the things that you think are hard are just new decisions that you never knew that you would have to make and you know they say more money more problems well that that's partially true it just it's more responsibility there's more things that you're going to have to focus on moving forward but they're not hard it's not it's not the the difficult part of paying off debt and it's not the difficult part of making choices to change your own life and the difficult part of looking your spouse in the eyes or looking in the mirror after you've done that first budget and going i need to change those things are over now we can start pushing towards things that are just uh, freeing and value maximizing and we'll do all those things in the in the coming financial action plan steps now i want to take a second here towards the end and just say i know some of you are watching this and you're not here yet you're not at this step and i want you to know that that that's okay and i want you to know that Nobody looks down on you for not being at this step and nobody's looking at you like you need to be here. This is somewhere you should strive to be, but if you're not here yet, be where you are, work hard where you are and do what you can to get to this step. Make this a goal, make this something that, that you want to push towards. I'm not going to shame you for not being in a particular financial place. That, that's, that's not my place. That's not something that I should be doing. So I'm not going to shame you for not being at this point where we're about to start really thriving financially. But push towards here. Know that it's doable. It is doable. No matter where you're at, you can make the decisions and do the things that are going to get you to this point. So just be diligent, work hard. I'm here to help you and I will continue speaking to you as well. We're just walking through these steps that are very uh, sequential and, and they, they require that the next one builds on the past one. And so I'm, I'm building forward in these steps. And so you may be on a step that's behind me. Go back and watch that video 30 times and get the, get the particular motivation that I, I put forth in, in one of those videos or, or get the information that I put out in those videos and continue watching those and strive to be at this point in this video doing the things that I'm talking about here. Watch this video as further motivation for the future and knowing where you're going to be next. Having a plan for the future, even though you're not there yet, is a huge deal. It's 
a lot of what this financial action plan is actually about. So trust me, I understand that building up an emergency fund is not the most fun that money has to offer. Building up an emergency fund is not the thing that you're going to look back on and go, man, I really enjoyed that. That was, that was the best part of the financial action plan. You're not going to look back and do that, even though you might like these videos and you might click the, the thumb, the like button on this video. It's not going to be the most fun that you actually do with money. And that's okay, but that doesn't mean it's not necessary. That doesn't mean that it's not something that should be done anyway. This is something that we have to do, and it's it's a way that we're going to move forward without the worries of the past, without having to worry about things that previously were, were ailing us and previously were, were weighing us down. We don't have to worry about those things now, and that's awesome. And that's what makes this step so necessary, and it's why I include it in these nine steps. And you notice it's it's right here in the middle, and it's a it's a perfect illustration of being the the point at which we are moving from being financially weak and having bad financial habits to the point where we're moving to being financially strong and having strong financial habits. And so so I think it's it's a great illustration of of where you need to be to to get over the hump and move to the point where where you're just really thriving and doing a lot of good financially. So, hey, I've really enjoyed this this episode, this episode number 11 moving forward. it's It's been a lot of fun this, thus far, and I'm just excited to, to continue along the financial action plan and move forward talking about investing and wealth building and, and all of those things. That's, that's what we're going to hit on tomorrow really hard. We're going to really go towards investing tomorrow. And so I, I want you to tune in and, and check that out. That'll, that'll drop at 6 a.m. Central tomorrow uh, along with... Uh, at the end of the week, I, I post these weekly rewinds, and it's just clips from the videos that came throughout the week in case you missed one, and it kind of gives you an idea of what that video is about. That's going to drop Saturday uh, at 6 a.m. Central, and I'm, I'm posting one of those every week as well on Saturday. So you can you can check that out if you don't necessarily know if you want to watch the, the full videos or, or you want to pick out which ones are most relevant to you. You can just, just take a take a step forward or, or backward wherever that weekly rewind is and go go take a look at that also don't forget to like comment if, if you want to leave me some feedback subscribe to my channel that way uh, we can just continue this dialogue and, and build this community of people who want to be financially free go follow me on social media at mno with dylan um, we're on all the so major social media platforms also go to my website, www.mnowithdylan.com, and you can see the the services that I offer, the financial coaching that, that I do, and and how I can maybe help you one-on-one -on -one a little better than just these videos or, or just this podcast. Uh, speaking of podcasts, you can go to iTunes Podcast or Spotify Podcast and subscribe as well. And just listen there if you don't want to watch the YouTube channel all the time. That's fine with me, but you, you can go and, and listen there and, and you, you'll get the exact same thing out of it as you would watching the video. It's, it's just the, the audio version. So, hey, thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Money's No Object. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'm your host, Dylan Howe. God bless.